Welcome to Lecture Online. What we will find sometimes when we try to find the integrating factor is that there are multiple integrating factors. Matter of fact, sometimes there's an infinite number of them. And so what happens? Under what circumstances will we see that there are multiple integrating factors? Well, let's go ahead and use a simple example right here. We have the differential equation y dx minus x dy equals zero. Remember that this is in the format of m dx plus n dy is equal to zero. And we, mean, we know that for this equation to be exact, that means that the partial of m with respect to y must equal the partial of n with respect to x, you know, and that's of course true if the equation is exact. So let's see if this equation is indeed exact. So we'll go ahead and do that. We take the partial with respect to uh, y of m, which is equal to the partial with respect to y of the quantity, that would in this case be y. Of course, when we do that, we get 1. If we take the partial with respect to x of n, which is equal to the partial with respect to x, oops, go with x of the quantity negative uh, x, so right here, so this would be equal to a minus 1. And if you take a look at it, not the same, they're not equal, therefore not exact. All right, that means we need an integrating factor, and the integrating factor typically can take on the form of x to the m, uh, y to the n. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by that integrating factor. So we take this equation right here, and we'll say integrating factor times y dx minus x dy is equal to zero. And of course the general form would be x to the m power, y to the n power times y dx minus x dy is equal to zero. And if we go ahead and multiply that through, we get the following. We get x to the m, y to the n plus one, dx minus, this would be x to the m plus one, y to the n times dy is equal to zero. So, now of course for this to be exact, we can take the partial of n with respect to x, the partial of m with, oh, the parts of m with respect to y, the parts of n with respect to x, and then we find the values for m and n, the exponents here, to make that exact. So, we're going to take the partial of, with respect to y, the partial with respect to y of this new quantity right here, which is going to be of the quantity x to the m power, y to the n plus 1 power, of course, when we do that, in this case, x remains constant, y is the variable, so we get n plus 1 times x to the m, y to the n exponent 1 less, which is simply y to the n power. All right, now we take the partial with respect to x of this new quantity right here, which would be a minus x to the m plus 1, y to the n. And of course, in this case, y will be the constant, x is the variable, so this becomes minus the quantity m plus 1 times x to the 1 less would be to the m power times y to the n. Notice, for this to be an exact equation, they have to be equal to each other, so we can set these equal to each other. Notice that we have an x to the m, y to the n, an x to the m, y to the n, which means for this to be exact, it requires that n plus 1 must be equal minus the quantity m plus 1. All right, so now let's find the relationship between n and m, because notice there are two unknowns in this equation. We only have one equation, which means there's not a single solution. There'll be an infinite number of solutions. So if we solve for n in terms of m, we could say that n plus 1 equals minus m minus 1, or n is equal to minus m minus 2. Which means for any particular value for m, we have a particular value for y. So let's say let m equal 0, then we know that n is equal to negative 2. If we let m equals 1, then n equals negative 3. If we let m equals negative 1, then we know that n is equal to a negative 1 and so forth. So it's an infinite number of solutions. 
let's go ahead and take this first example right here. We're going to let m equal 0 and n equal negative 2, which means that our integrating factor, f, is going to be equal to x to the m power, x to the m power, y to the n power, which is equal to x to the 0, y to the negative 2, which means that the integrating factor will be 1 over y squared. If we take this as a possible solution for the integrating factor, then we have the integrating factor is equal to x to the m, y to the n, and in this case it will be x to the first power and y to the negative 3 power. So the integrating factor in this case will be an x divided by y cubed. Either one should work. If we multiply both sides of the equation by 1 over y squared or multiply both sides of the equation by x over y cubed, we should get a solution. We should get a, an exact equation which will then lead us to the solution. Let's go ahead and try that. Let's go ahead and multiply both sides of the equation by this integrating factor and then see if the equation is indeed exact. So we start out with this equation right here. So we have the integrating factor times y dx minus x dy is equal to zero. So let me go ahead and draw an arrow this way so we know that where we came from. The integrating factor we're going to choose is 1 over y squared. So 1 over y squared times y dx minus x dy is equal to zero. Notice when I multiply I will get um, dx over y minus, and here we get x over y squared dy is equal to 0, and maybe I should write it like this, a little better, 1 over y dx minus x over y squared dy equals 0. So let's see if we now have an exact equation. So we're going to take the partial of uh, 1 over y with respect to y. So we take the partial respect to y of 1 over y, which is equal to well, there's, of course, the partial with respect to y of y to the minus 1, which means that this is equal to minus, uh, minus 1 times y to the minus 2, which is equal to minus 1 over y squared. Take the partial with respect to x of this quantity right here, which is a minus x over y squared. Notice that y in this case is a constant. The negative is a constant, so this becomes... This becomes minus 1 over y squared. Notice that this is equal to this. They are the same, so therefore the equation now is exact by using one of the many or one of the infinite number of integrating factors. Again, there will be lots of cases where the resultant technique will end up in a situation where there's a number of integrating factors that you can use to find the correct solution. Use any one of them and you should be able to find the solution to the differential equation. And that's how we deal with many or an infinite number of integrating factors.